tonight in the WSL. Every team must vote to decide who has control over the skaters. Will it be enforcer Captain Mark D'Amato, the powerful skater representative of the SOC organization? SOC has been formed to stop WSL's madness. Or will it remain the controversial new general manager, Kenneth Logue III? This vote will defeat disgusting sex and violence that we've seen out here on a regular basis. But first, D'Amato must face this man. Last meeting, Sean Atkinson rubbed salt in D'Amato's wounds, and the Ack attack is ready to do it again. Plus, Quake's jammer Amy Craig has been racking up the points, and the bank track maids, known as the Bod Squad, won't want to be outdone. Enforcers and the Quakes next on Roller Jam. Vegas, and we're happy to have you with us, everybody, for the Wild West Shootout tonight. I'm Rory Marcus with Lee Hawk Rareman, and what a matchup for the shootout. The New York Enforcers and the California Quakes. The last time these two teams met, we lost one of the great pieces of World Skating League memorabilia, the first Founders Cup. This is all that's left of it. Sean Atkinson skated out with it. Mark D'Amato got a hold of it, and this is all we have left. Well, it, absolutely, but we were supposed to see these guys the first game of the season. Of course, the boycott of Mark D'Amato and the New York Enforcers, that didn't happen. Then they come out. They're breaking trophies. These guys need no excuse to go after each other. They always find a reason to try to kill each other, Roy. Well, the Quakes have to win tonight, or they're out of the shootout. As for Mark D'Amato and the Enforcers, D'Amato has a lot on his mind other than skating. Well, of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that uh, the Kenneth Logue, the third, the general manager of the World Skating League, the new general manager of the World Skating League, is fighting Mark D'Amato tooth and nail. It seems like you can't pick up a newspaper without reading about the battle between Kenneth Logue and Mark D'Amato. Well, that's really what's going to happen here tonight. We're going to find out a lot more about that battle between Kenneth Logue and Mark D'Amato. And Mark D'Amato on the track. I think he's going to be trying to take full advantage of the fact that Sean Atkinson might not be 100% tonight. And on the women's side, well, these New York Enforcer women, they're just as bad as they look. And the sisters are suffering. And I have to admit, I kind of like the addition of uh, that little bit of leather to the female side of the ball. But look for Karen Magnuson really to come out here and, and use a few whips of her own on the track. Here come the men now to join the Enforcer women. Though that leather you were talking about is Lauren Adams and Courtney Barlow, of course. But when the men come on the track, that's when the Enforcers really get tough because look at this guy, Tim Washington. Leather's on the system of suffering. There's change in the top for a lot of Tim Washington. He's the muscle. I don't know if Mark D'Amato's the pine. These guys are just 100% of it. Mark D'Amato has a lot on his mind as he tries to grab control of this World Skating League and take it away from the league general manager, Kenneth Logue, as the union vote looms tonight. The Quakes trying to keep their mind on business as well as their women skate out here. And that means, of course, the Bod Squad. I hope the Bod Squad doesn't get burned up in that fire as they come on the track, but Stacy Blitch, she's still able to do a cartwheel and get onto the track in pretty good shape. When the men come out, of course, Sean Atkinson nursing a sore shoulder and trying to keep things together with the Quake men. But the big news, I believe, tonight, as far as the Skaters Union, will come around at halftime. I think Broadway Danny Wolf might have something to add to that. He's in the infield. Let's go there now. Take it away, Danny. All right, at halftime tonight, it's all going to come to a head. We're talking about the Skaters United Coalition. Will it pass? Won't it? Right now in an undisclosed room in the back, we have some executives counting the votes. A team representative from each team is bringing in the skaters' votes. We will learn the results at halftime of this very crucial election. Will Mark D'Amato and Suck went out? Will Mark D'Amato basically rule the World Skating League? Or will this be Kenneth Logue III's finest hour? We'll learn at halftime. Back to you, Rory and Hawk. Thanks a lot, Danny. Mark D'Amato has his fingers crossed as we get ready to go. Roller Rules, brought to you by Dial 1-800-AT&T for collect calls. Here are the rules of Roller Jam. There are four six-minute periods. The women skate periods one and three. The men skate periods two and four. There are five skaters per team, two jammers, and three blockers. The blockers wear white helmets. The jammers have the black helmet with the stripe. 
points are scored when jammers lap opposing team members. Here's an example of what I was just talking about. The jammer for the green team breaks out from the pack and circles the track. For each member of the red team that he or she passes, one point is earned. Well, it'll be difficult sometimes to know who's jamming, but look for Stacy Blitch. She's got the blue, I guess, cotton ensemble on, and she's ready to come in here and make a statement, not only a fashion statement, but, of course, Karen Magnuson. She's as dirty as they come. The Sisters of Suffering, Karen Magnuson is Sister of Suffering through and through. Period number one about to get underway, and here we go. Lauren Adams gets out quickly for the New York Enforcers in the black leather outfit that we both love so much. And there she goes. She's on the jam by herself right now, but catching up quickly for the California Quakes is Jennifer Matthews. Jennifer Matthews is out there for the Quakes. Early in the game, and yet everybody, I think, thinking about that vote, Hawk. Well, they're thinking about the vote, and they're also, you have to wonder if these guys are going to play a little bit timid because going into any kind of a, of a new shape to the World Skating League, which can be very different, you don't want to pick sides, you don't, and of course, you don't want to be injured as well. Amy Craig showing tremendous speed, got out ahead of the jam, and now she's going to get a little help from Stacy Blitch of the Bod Squad. As Amy Craig reaches the back of the pack, and Karen Magnuson's back there, Stacy Blitch to run some interference. And a whip for Amy Craig up to the top of the track, and in she goes. She scores for the Quakes. And, and Roy, this battle has been going on since the beginning of time. And I think what caused this no. is when. Stacy Blitch came around to butt block Karen Magnuson. She skate whipped her. If you notice, she put her skate right into her midsection. Here's the beginning of the play. Stacy Blitch comes around. Look at that skate right to the midsection of Karen Magnuson. Our referees missed it. Karen Magnuson did not. And the result is her down as Janet Abraham hits the turf. Well, you were sure right about them being timid. <laughs> what do I know? It's two to nothing. The Quakes get the early lead in this game. I don't think they can play that way. These two teams don't like each other at all. East Coast against West Coast. And Jamie Conomac gets out of the jam in her mod squad outfit that if uh, Lowe get, gets his way, they won't be wearing anymore. And the same can be said for Courtney Barlow. She's in the long black leather pants, and out she goes after Jamie Conomac. Two terrific jammers. See if Cotamac can keep her lead here, but Courtney Barlow catching her from behind and sneaking in on the inside. Barlow takes Cotamac out. And Jamie Cotamac in her spring ensemble totally taken out by the New York evening wear <laughs> of Courtney Barlow. Did you ever think we'd be calling jams in terms of what their fashion statement was, Rory? I never really gave it much thought, but I sure do like it. And Kenneth Loeb doesn't like to think about it. Janet Abraham comes back to assist. Stacy Blitch is back there. You've got some tough uh, cookies back there in the back of the pack. And Courtney Barlow goes down. Stacy Blitch put her down. Now, maybe let, let well enough alone, Stacy. Can she do it? This time she does. After all, they do have the lead. It's 2 nothing Quakes. We're back with more right after this. The Yak Attack has found its way to Broadway Danny Wolf. Sean Atkinson, in just a few moments after the men's period at halftime, we're going to learn the results of the election. Will Suck win out, or will it be you guys? The skaters will vote down Mark Diamato again. Mark Diamato is a loser, and guess what? Diamato, you suck! Diamato sucks! Mark D'Amato over there in the infield. I guess when you form a group and call it suck, you're just asking for trouble, huh? <laughs> well, speaking of uh, downplaying something, Stacy Blitch again out with that jammer helmet on. Her and Amy Craig, a one-two punch that is really tough for anybody to deal with. And that's number 18. Christine Kassan, as she saw it firsthand. It's tough when these two get out because they both are very big young ladies but they also are very fast for it amy craig and stacy blitch and stacy blitch says come on amy follow me but it's not that easy is it neither one of them are able to get by the first try against uh, april tootle stacy blitch and amy craig the only two right now in a position to score and april tootle trying to turn them aside so far doing a good job of it three seconds left on the jam and they couldn't get by 
And a great job by April Tudor. We've talked about her being a much slenderer jammer this year. As you see Stacy Blitch, a little bit of the result of April Tootles. She hadn't forgot that she could also play very powerfully, Rory. I'll tell you what, Stacy Blitch, the bot squad member, she's tough, but she was feeling the pain right there. That was a difficult jam, and these New York Enforcer women have been known to inflict some pain. Stacy Blitch felt it right there. Now April Tootle gets a whip, and she's on her way out on the next jam. April Tootle going up high as the New York Enforcers look to grab some points here. And that's Heather Sunderman she's out there against. Sunderman and Toodle on the jam. Heather Sunderman is out there now. As the California Quakes still have a 2-0 lead in this game. And look who has the jammer helmet on, April Toodle. Big yep. period for her, and she trips. Heather Sunderman, she's, and she becomes her own worst enemy. And now she's the one that escapes, and she's up with a chance to score. Heather Sunderman a little slow to get up, but you can understand that because she just had her legs taken out from under her. And April Toodle comes to the back of the pack now, and she'll try and rack up some points for the enforcers, who so far have been shut out in this game, but not anymore, as April Toodle is going right by with Karen Magnuson's help. And Karen Magnuson, the captain of the Sisters of Suffering for the New York Enforcers. And April Toodle, you see her take out Heather Sunderman. I don't know how legal that was. In fact, I know it was downright illegal. That's a dirty trick to go down low and knock somebody's legs out from underneath. That's a typical sister of suffering fashion. They got the points, though, and they tied the game up 2-2. Time for one more jam in the women's first period here. And to getting out quickly is Lauren Adams of the New York Enforcers. And following her is Amy Craig. Boy, I'd love to watch Amy Craig skate. She's terrific out there on the jams. But then again, so is Lauren Adams. Lauren Adams has a tough time. She's very similar in her skating style to Heather Sunderman of the California Quakes. She's so tall and she has a tendency to stand up when she gets tired, Rory, and that gives her an opportunity for other people on other teams to take her down very quickly. That's what happened right there. They both went down, and that gives the Quakes a chance to get two jammers out. As Amy Craig is out there, and she's joined by Cindy Zimmerman. Now the Quakes have a golden opportunity if they can beat the clock to take the lead. Five seconds left on the jam. Cindy Zimmerman got by, so did Amy Craig. They got at least a couple. Still a chance for Amy to get another one if she does. Three Quakes points. Cindy Zimmerman and Amy Craig, that was just speed that made those points possible. And now look out. Here's Stacey Blitch, and there she goes. And it's all broken loose. That's Karen Magnuson. She's the captain of the enforcers. Stacey Blitch, the captain of the Quakes. Our railing has seen better days. Stacy Blitch, she's never shy about playing to the crowd. She loves to blow kisses, a big smile on her face. She loves the action, but wait for some more action because the men are coming on the track. Sean Atkinson will be leading the Quakes, and Mark Damato will be leading the New York Enforcers as the men come out to skate the second period. So far, though, the Quake women have done a good job. California has the lead. It's 5-2. to two. Stay right with us. We're coming back to Las Vegas. Welcome back from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. A beautiful place to have a game, but not so beautiful tonight if you're Kenneth Logue the third, the league general manager. Well, the key matchup sound like a broken record. Sean Atkinson, he's nursing a, a little bit of a sore shoulder that may keep him preoccupied. And Mark D'Amato, I think he's trying to nurse life into what is uh, the Skaters United Coalition. But look for these two to just battle all night, Rory, on and off the track. Well, D'Amato will have to put that out of his mind at least for six minutes and skate this second period. And right now, Rocky Bowman gets out there for the New York Enforcers. Eric Swopey is on the jam for the California Quakes, and they go right at one another. Bowman goes down, Swopey goes down, and Bowman manages to get back up, and he'll carry the jam now. Well, and he really adds a new asset to the Enforcer lineup, Rory. He really worked on a skating in the offseason like we've been talking about, and then brings a whole new weapon to the arsenal of Mark D'Amato. Sean Atkinson back to block. Sean Atkinson knocks Bowman down. Boy, it's tough to get by this guy. The act attack is tough, whether he's jamming, whether he's in the back of the pack, wherever he is on the track. But guess what? Uh -oh. Tim Washington has a little surprise for the act attack, an attack of his own. Two 
Rushy Montgomery tries to stuck in there. And look at this guy. What's going through his mind? What's going through D'Amato's mind? Well, that's, I don't like that. They're trying to cripple the guy. Into the box goes D'Amato. Look at this. Washington had Atkinson. D'Amato comes out of the infield to push him over the railing. And once again, it's a fair fight. I mean, Tim Watson's a big man. Sean Atkinson's a grown man, too. But when two of them pick on him, Sean Atkinson always finds himself in that situation. And every once in a while, you hate to say it, but you feel sorry for the attack. John Morrissey's out. Tom Smith's out for the Quakes on the jam. Five to three, the Quakes lead the game, and Morrissey gets the best of that. The enforcer man trying to make a statement here. Well, and this shows you the smarts of John Morrissey. With Mark D'Amato in the penalty box, he knows the Quakes are on a power play, so he tries to take their jammer out right from the beginning, and he was successful right from the shoot. Atkinson wouldn't mind inflicting a little damage of his own now in the back of the pack. John Atkinson. He's defending back there as Morrissey has to try and get by him somehow to score a point. Oh! Washington just picked up Rocky Bowman and threw him into Atkinson. We've seen him do it before. They call it the Rock, and I don't know how Atkinson keeps getting up. Well, we've seen it before. You're absolutely right. I think Sean Atkinson saw it before the last two times these guys played. But the Rock is the most acrobatic, awesome move that, we, that you'll see nothing more powerful in the World Skating League. And Big Tim Washington uses Rocky Bowman. Basically, he says, OK, I'm an auto, auto mechanic of the Upper East Side. Hey, Sean Atkins, you want a hood ornament? Well, I think Tim Washington could pick up the whole car and throw it. Five to four the score now. The Quakes lead is down to one point here in the second period. And after two jams, Atkinson's had a tough time of it, I'll tell you. And now getting out there for the Quakes, that's number 26, Tony Santiago. And he's out against Fred Eichhorn, and he knocks Eichhorn down to the track. And Tony Santiago is going to find Mark D'Amato waiting for him, and he gets up to score the points. D'Amato flexing his arms, flexing his muscles, showing off, saying, come on. And he knocks Santiago down. Atkinson's a tough customer. And he's going to have a little surprise now for D'Amato. He wanted to, but Sean Atkinson knocked his own jammer down. And Sean Atkinson is having a tough go over here, Rory. You're absolutely right. Grimacing in pain as he leans over. Meanwhile, Santiago goes on to try and score some points and does get three points. One point for the enforcers there, and that makes it a seven to five, make it eight to five contest. The Quakes have the lead. Well, I don't want to say Sean Atkinson is crying wolf, but a lot of times he should get the Academy Award. But here you see Santiago dispensing of Icord. A little bit later, Mark D'Amato does a little pivot. Sean Atkinson goes down, gets two points, but it's got to be paid for. You gotta be kidding me. You think he's crying wolf tonight? He's been racked up on every jam so far. Eight to five, the Quakes have the lead, and they have the only jammer out there right now. That's Eric Slopey. And there's the white pony, Eric Slopey. Hey, man, you're in the Viva Las Vegas. You're the Wild West shootout. Quit celebrating and score some points, my friend. <laughs> he's gonna try it. He says, ah, come back here and help me out with this guy. This Washington guy's big. Oh! Atkinson took him down, and Slopey gets the point. D'Amato waits. Slopey comes to D'Amato as the pack is decimated by the Quakes. Look at Atkinson. Look at Atkinson. Oh, man. He came up and hit D'Amato from behind, and now it's D'Amato who's hurting. And Atkinson is a clean sweep on this jam. First, he's taking out Big Tim Washington during the jam. Mixing it up a little more with a Cavani over there. Then he goes off and he finishes off D'Amato. It's two on one. But I'll tell you what, if there's somebody who can pick it up, it's Sean Atkinson. Ten to five is the score. The Quakes have the lead, and they have the only jam around again. This might be the last jam of the first period. As out there is Tony Santiago out ahead of the pack, being chased by the speed skating Rocky Bowman. And Bowman closes in on Santiago, sleeks up behind him, whacks him in the back of the head and goes on by. Rocky Bowman would have had no shot to catch up to Tony Santiago. He closed the gap, dispensed of it. Now he can score and help his team, Ryan. That was then. This is now. And Santiago was knocked out of the play. And there's Rusty Montgomery back 
to defend against Rocky Bowman. Montgomery's a tough customer in his own right. You want to see what I mean? And wow, Hawk, Rocky Bowman never saw it coming. Rocky Bowman has a move. They call it the rock, but he's thrown by Tim Washington. And he was on the receiving end of a big move there. The skyscraper, the act attack. Oh, is he pumped? The vote counting goes on backstage. And when we come back at halftime, we'll have the results of the union vote. Broadway has Kenneth Logue in the infield. Here we go. The moment of truth has finally arrived. We will now learn about the future, the fate of the Skaters United Coalition. That's Mark D'Amato's side. The votes have been tabulated. We're gonna learn in just one second. D. Haslam and Scott Bushnell have tabulated all votes. Every skater has been accounted for. And we're right now, one second, Scott, I can hear you. We will learn about the future of the Skaters Union, if it passes or if it doesn't pass. All right, Scott, go ahead. I can hear you. Those in favor of the Skaters United Coalition, 42. Those against the Skaters United Coalition, for, Scott, you're breaking up. All right, those against the Skaters United Coalition, 42, that's a tie, 42, 42. This is never gonna get resolved. A uh, tie is not a majority, I'm sorry. I mean, you needed a clear majority. A tie, I don't believe that. Listen to me, it's a tie right now. I got a way to resolve this. You listen up. You and me. Three laps. Anything goes. No rules. We're tied together at the wrist. Wait a minute. I'm not done. I'm not done. Hold up. Hold up. The winner, the loser gives the winner his vote, breaking the tie. Hey, hey, you know that my shoulder's been dislocated. I can barely run, man. What the hell are you talking about? I tell you what, I'll have Rossi run with one of your guys. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. No, that's not gonna do. You and me. Hey, you know what? You're a coward like your father and your grandfather. On the track. Oh, Daddy, you got yourself a race! Oh, Sean Atkinson pounding his head with a microphone. He checks, he kind of looked at his hand there to see if there was any blood on it, but he's ready to race, and Mark D'Amato still doesn't know what's going on as far as his union is concerned. Well, unfortunately, he ain't the only one who doesn't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on. That man doesn't know what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on. That's why we love the action here in the World Skating League. That's why they have to decide it on the track. Meanwhile, we have a game to decide. Third quarter coming up. Stacy Blitz for the California Quakes. Janet Abraham and the New York Enforcers. They'll be going at one another as the women take to the track for period number three. Stay with us. We'll be right back to crazy Las Vegas. What a night. What a night in Las Vegas as we get set to go into period number three. The Quakes and the New York Enforcers. The women are on the track right now, but we're filled with anticipation for that match race after this game. Jamie Conomac gets out first. The Bond Squad for the California Quakes. Conomac leads the jam and Sydney Zimmerman's behind her. And for the New York Enforcers, that's Lauren Adams playing catch up. Conomac. 
approaches the back of the pack. Lauren Adams trying to get her. Oh, man, did she ever get her? Put her into the railing. And now knocks down Zimmerman as well. But Lauren Adams slips up and falls. The first jam of the second half. The Quakes holding a 10 to 5 lead in this game. And Lauren Adams in the black leather outfit, the shorts, against the bot squad. Janet Abraham's going to help out in the back of the pack. Jamie Conomac trying to catch from behind. Only nine seconds left in the jam. Is anybody going to be able to score? Yes, they are. Wow. They're all going down. And right there, Rory, we saw the Abraham, or Janet Abraham's been a little quiet lately. You see her looking over the carnage she's created. Jamie Conomac hit the turf. Stacy Blitz wasn't around. And Stacy Blitz says, hey, you can't treat my people like that. Come on, woman. You know, if the Quakes lose this game, they're out of the Wild West shootout. And Stacy Blitz skates wisely away from the Abrahammer so she won't get hurt. Well, Janet Abraham takes down Cindy Zimmerman. Then she takes down the double block with Brooke Sunderman. Jamie Conamack gets a piece. She even took down her teammate, Lauren Adams. But I tell you what, Rory, it's like we're also anticipating this, this death match, this cage match, this wrist match between Sean Atkins and Mark Tomato. It's almost like this is just a, a pregame warm-up for us. I think it was just inevitable that someday Mark Tomato and Sean Atkinson would have a match race. Today is the day. Jamie Conamack gets out again along with Cindy Zimmerman once again. So the bot squad leading the jam. The Quakes facing elimination in the tournament and leading in the game 11 to seven. I thought you were gonna say it was inevitable they'd be tied together, but I'm glad you didn't say that, my friend. <laughs> well, that's going to happen too. There's Abraham back to the back of the pack with all three bot squatters facing her. First they dispose of Adrian Medrano. Now they go to work on Abraham. Look at this. For the Bob Squad, they love to work together on that track and they've done a good job. And you know what else they love to do? They love to pose for pictures and let the crowd take a look at them in those outfits. I know you don't mind it either, Hawk. I am a little preoccupied myself. And speaking of preoccupation, Stacy Blitch, all her flash sometimes is productive. Janet Abraham a little preoccupied with Stacy Blitch. It's the double Bob Squad bust. They got some points out of it too, and it did look good. 13 to 7. The Quakes lead it by six. And out of the jam goes Stacy Blitch. And there goes her nemesis, Karen Magnuson, out with her. Oh, what a shot by Blitch into Magnuson, but it didn't do anything to her. These two are both tough. This wouldn't be a bad match race matchup either, would it? Uh-oh, look out! Stacy Blitch goes! She might really be hurt, Rory. Similar to what Sean Atkinson has to contend with with Big Tim Washington and Mark Tomato, Stacy Blitch has to contend with and Karen Magnuson and Janet Abraham a two-on-one sometimes result in what you just saw. Karen Magnuson picks up the three points. Watch the flight that Stacy Blitch takes. Well, they're skating as fast as these skaters do, and all of a sudden run into that rail. It's a shock to the system, let me tell you. Now, speaking of speed, there goes Amy Craig out after Courtney Barlow. These are two terrific skaters. Amy Craig for the Quakes, Barlow for the Enforcers, and was taken out. And Amy Craig claps her hands and says, I got rid of one, now let me go score some points. She's gonna get a whip. She's not gonna get a whip, she's gonna have to do it herself. Now they set it up, and they whip her right through the two defenders. Amy Craig got a couple. She gets up and calls it off. Oh, they didn't give her anything. They're saying that Amy Craig passed on the infield, so they didn't give her the points. Well, Sean Corbin, you're absolutely right, said the skate at the infield. The atomic whip goes for none. Get rolling, let's go. There's Amy Craig knocking Barlow out of the play. Getting those black leather pants a little dirty on the track. And then the atomic whip. Amy Craig takes that Janet Abraham. He's having a tough go of it, but apparently her skate hit it. I mean, didn't get a good shot on that egg. They do get one more jam off here in the uh, third period. And Amy Craig says, give me that helmet again. I want to get out there one more time. She's going to get a whip, but she'll be out chasing Lauren Adams. And goes right by Adams. Boy, Craig 
gets on those great skates, it's hard to stop her. And down goes Lauren Allen. Oh, right down to the last chain. Well, and Amy Craig has dispensed of the two jammers for the New York Enforcers, and this is where Heather Gunn would be, of course, from last season. The battles between Amy Craig and Heather Gunn were infamous. Oh, they miss Heather Gunn, no question about it. And now Amy Craig. Up where she's going to try and score some points. She's going to get a little help from her teammates. The Quakes facing elimination. Stacy Blitz sets up and makes a play. Jam. Rocky Bowman again. 
And if our referee was paying attention, Eric Slopey went off the track and was lapped by Rocky Bowman. I'm not sure if the referee saw it. We'll wait for his ruling. Now Washington and Atkinson together in the back of the pack. And Bowman goes by on the inside as Washington. Oh! It's crying wolf, but I'm not sure. But we, we, it is confirmed that that shoulder has been hurting him. You gotta be kidding me, crying wolf. You think that doesn't hurt? That skate right to the shoulder where he's already sore. Well, the last time he was nursing something though, Rory, he came back with a skyscraper from the top rope. I think he's just a tough guy. Now watch this. Tell me if he's crying wolf now. Well, they call it the boot. Big Tim Washington, Mark D'Amato, partners in crime, right to that shoulder. You're right. I, I got to give it to Sean Atkinson. That could not have felt good. <laughs> no, there's no way that feels good. 15 to 12. The Quakes have the lead here late in the fourth period with about a minute and a half to go. There goes Eric Slopey out on the jam once again. I take it back. That's Brian Krebs for the Quakes. And he's out there with Fred Eichhorn of the Enforcers. And Eichhorn knocks Krebs out of the play. And now Eichhorn trying to give the Enforcers the lead. They need three to tie, four to go ahead. Atkinson in the back of the pack. Atkinson trying to keep Icorn away. D'Amato glances back over his shoulder to see what's going on in that pack. And that's what's going on right there. Atkinson elbows. Where is Mark D'Amato? He's ahead of the pack. Now he turns around. Look out, Atkinson. Look out. Oh! D'Amato's face as well as Fred Icorn. Fred Icorn was livid. You see Mark D'Amato laying in wait. Sean Atkinson set up for the screamer. It goes awry. Fred Icorn gets a face full of Mark D'Amato crotch. I don't think there's anything worse on earth than a face full of Mark D'Amato crotch. Hello, Fred Icorn. <laughs> I can't think of anything worse offhand, Hawk. This is the last jam of the night. The Quakes are up by three. They need the win to stay alive in this tournament. And the Quakes have the jammer out there right now. That's, That's Tom Smith breaking out here in the closing moments, Rory. That's number 27, Tom Smith, and he's being chased out there by Rocky Bowman. The Quakes lead it by three. They need to hang on and win this thing or they're out of this tournament. And now, look at the pack. The pack is disintegrating. And the Quakes get the points. He calls off the jam. Tom Smith calls off the jam. And the Quakes are going to win this thing. Look at Rocky Bowman. He's on the track again. Well, this is the agony of defeat and the thrill of victory, but as beautiful as it is, as much as there's a contrast, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think everybody in the building is waiting for the match race. I know Stacy Blitch is. Let's take another look. The pack is taken apart by the Quakes blockers. They call that the Raptor, Hawk. They call it the Raptor, and Sean Atkinson has a little bit of the same celebratory attitude to everything. He's adding a little salt to the wound of Tim Washington. As Tim Washington is hurt, it's a good thing for him. The game's over. We certainly haven't finished, though. The Quakes win the game. They stay alive in the Wild West shootout. But the match race is next between Atkinson and D'Amato. Don't go away. The match race. We're ready to go. Mark D'Amato setting up Sean Atkinson there no right there for the Quakes. If D'Amato wins, his union First goes into effect. If Atkinson wins, wins, the union no is no goal. more, and they are tied together at the wrist by a rope. So anything goes. It's a fight to the finish. The First one across the finish line wins, but with that rope here we go. connecting them, you can't get too far away from your opponent. And here we go into the match race. Atkinson kind of toys with D'Amato with that rope. And they're trying to really get their bearings as Kenneth Lowe looks on. He, of course, is pulling for Atkinson. Well, and I think some of these players, and as well as some of the management here, like Kenneth Lowe, are starting to realize what this match race means. This affects everyone in the World Skating League, Rory. The two teams are in the infield watching the proceedings as Atkinson yanks down the model from behind. And that's what you can do when you've got that rope. But be careful, don't celebrate too much, Sean. 
Uh, trying to keep things going as Atkinson, almost like a tug of rope, pulls on him to bring him closer. And now Atkinson goes down, and D'Amato just kind of drags him along the track. D'Amato has a lot at stake here. If he wins this thing, he can be in charge of the entire league if he survives the choking he's getting from Atkinson. Well, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if that affects us, Roy. Does he control us if he wins? I hope not. We'll have to find out if he wins, I guess. But right now, he's off the track, and Atkinson's just dragging him back on with that rope. Atkinson, if he was not attached, could just go on. But instead, the choke hold again. And look at D'Amato. He might pass out. Atkinson would have to drag him all the way to the finish line. And they're in the final lap. The crowd can't believe what they're seeing. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Sean Atkinson and Mark D'Amato, these two warriors, just win a whole game. And these guys, it's not good versus evil. It's just guts versus guts. And they're trying to come down to the finish. Look at Logue. He's nervous as a cat. He's in there hoping that D'Amato falls down for good. And with a shot like that to the head from Atkinson, he might. D'Amato hanging on the rail. Both men on the brink of exhaustion as they look for that finish line. And they're not far from it now. You see it there at the top of your screen. The Quake Skaters cheering their captain, Atkinson. D'Amato takes a sprint for it. Oh! He didn't quite make it. I thought he was going to get there right there, Rory. But Atkinson somehow is holding on. Atkinson has an ounce of strength left. <laughs> and that might have taken half of it. Can he reach it? D'Amato reaches out for that line. But Atkinson's holding on to the rope with his head up against the upright, just trying to keep Atkinson away. D'Amato, one more try. And Tim Washington chomping at the bit. He can't do anything about it at this point. D'Amato signals. Oh! He signaled to Washington, who came with the bench. Is that legal? Atkinson is out. D'Amato's across the line, and I don't know if it's legal, but anything goes in a match race. Long says it's not legal. Referee Sean Carbon says it's all right. And D'Amato has won it. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Tim Washington came on the track with the fence, though, Rory. I'm, I'm kind of on low set. How could that be legal? It doesn't seem like it should be legal. I don't think Atkinson has enough uh, strength to argue it. Of course, no holds barred in a match. Oh, what's Loeb doing now? He better not try and fight with D'Amato, or that's going to be the result. He'll spend a lot of time on his keister if he gets in a fight with Mark. Well, this has not been his day particularly the last few minutes, Kenneth Logue is a man at the end of a rope. Speaking of ropes, Rory. Kenneth Logue is helped up, checks to see if his face is still okay. And I don't know how Atkinson could possibly be okay after that bench hit him in the back. D'Amato's able to win it. Thanks for being with us. It was an incredible show. We hope you're with us again next time. Final score of the game, the Quakes win, but D'Amato's the big winner tonight. Guests of the WSL Roller Jam stay at the MGM Grand Casino, the city of entertainment.